would you say a big part of your job, Charlotte, is pitching ideas? I would say that it's the majority of the job. Okay. I would say that pitching ideas, you're pitching ideas in the writer's room. You're pitching ideas when you're pitching a TV show in, the, in a pitch meeting. You're pitching yourself in a general meeting as someone that people might want to work with. Um, I think learning how to make things, I think learning how to sell, unfortunately, is really what it's about. And I think learning how to sell is really just about clarity and knowing your audience. I think when you're in a writer's room, it can be kind of fast paced and you're trying to like get a, a pitch in. But if you know your audience, which is usually your showrunner, and you know what they lean towards, you know if they're comedy forward, you know if they're relationship forward, if they're character forward, if they're story forward, if they're like, they're the kind of showrunner that really likes a good set piece in every scene, you know, so you know your audience, you know who you're, or you'll learn your audience as you're in the writer's room and you'll pitch to that. So that's about knowing my audience and that's about being clear, you know, that's about, um, sharing my ideas in a way that is clear that it's comedy, that it's funny. Like I'm, this is clearly a comedy idea. This is about, this is a funny situation and we put these two characters in it and that's what's going to make it funny because one of them won't stop speaking with a British accent, whatever <laughs> the, you know, so that's what I mean about clarity, about like just, it's clearly funny. It's clearly dramatic. It's clearly about character. It's clearly about a relationship. It's clearly, this is a set piece pitch or something like that. Um, and then when you're in a pitch meeting, that is so much about clarity and knowing your audience. Am I at a pitch meeting at Hulu? Am I at a pitch meeting at Fox? Um, is this, you know, is this particular network um, trying to do more unscripted things? Are they trying to do more features? Are they trying to do animated? Are they trying to do drama? Are they trying to do comedy? Like, if you go into <laughs> an A and E meeting with an animated comedy, you're not, <laughs> you're probably not in the right place, you know? So it, it's about knowing your audience and that's something that your reps are gonna help you with. They're gonna tell you who's in the room. They're gonna tell you what's selling right now in Hollywood. Um, and then if you are in a general meeting, you know, like if you're a writer and they, and you get scheduled to be in a general meeting, let's say you're in a general meeting with like Sean DeLand or something, you get to meet the producers at Sean DeLand. Um, this meeting is really about pitching yourself by being yourself. It's really about demonstrating what you're like on a normal basis, what your ideas are like, what your background is like, what your point of view is like, so that people can easily place you in work. You know, it's like if I'm at Shondaland and I'm having, a, and I'm talking about how I was born in Haiti and I was raised really Christian and I, you know, I really struggle with self-confidence and then I became a comedian. Then it's like, they'll probably place me in a comedy if they needed somebody to write a comedy on a TV show as a staff writer, or maybe they're producing a feature film and they need somebody to do a rewrite or something, or maybe they want something particular, maybe they want a rom-com and they're like, oh, we can bring in Sharla because she's very grounded. She has this background. Maybe they wanted a rom-com about like a Haitian or something like that, which is, doesn't exist, <laughs> but maybe they wanted that. And then, th so they know that I'm Haitian. They know that I have a comedy background. They know that I like very grounded stories. Like just as much as possible telling them who I am and what I do and how I see the world and the things that I like to do so that they can easily place me. So I think it's just always about, pitching is just selling. And like, I think selling is about clarity and knowing your audience. And so you talked about, you know, selling yourself. You know, there's, I think back to the, the say anything sort of mantra, you know, I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to make anything that's sold. But essentially we all have to answer to someone and we're selling ourselves. So how do you know what the audience is for you? Yeah. You know, I love that question because I think the thing that has helped me the most in my career is always being my own audience, always being my first audience. If I don't like it, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> like if I like it, that means there's something to it. Um, if I want to see it, then that means there's something to it. And so I think it's really about respecting my own taste and my own, um, the things that I'm drawn to. 
and being able to put myself in the position of the audience. Because at the end of the day, we are the audience. It's me and you. Um, the algorithm is people. <laughs> it's people watching it. it. Do people like this? Do people find this valuable? And what I like about thinking about it that way is if we're so busy thinking about, oh, what does the market want? The market is whatever. The market likes what's good. <laughs> the market is the audience. You know, when we're talking about the market, we're talking about people and we're talking about what they like. And what people like is original stories that have heart. Like if you look at everything everywhere all at once, why is that movie so awesome? Because it's about a mother and a daughter who, a, a daughter who wants to connect with her mom. Um, it's, it's just about us wanting to be seen as human beings. It's about the human experience. You know, so ultimately I think that um, we are the audience and you should just, and sometimes, you know, that might not have wide appeal and that's okay. But ultimately I'm my first audience and I am a stand-in for the audience. Okay, so if we think how though the audience will change their likes, the tempo, when you were 24 and you gave yourself 10 years, maybe you didn't tell anybody, but I love this story. Did you know what you were the audience for and has that changed? At the time, you know, I did know what I was the audience for because I didn't see myself reflected in a lot of these shows that I was watching. Like at the time, I think I was watching like Girls, I think on HBO, I was watching Lena Dunham and I was like, you know, even when I was living in that neighborhood <laughs> or hanging out in that neighborhood, you don't, I don't see myself reflected in that show in any way. Um, and then when a black, black character was in that show, it was very much about them being black and not just about them being a person and how they fit into that story. Um, so I just felt like I just wanted to write stories about imperfect black girls, about black girls that were inappropriate, about black girls that were goofy, <laughs> that were... Um, that were, that were a little bit promiscuous because that was something that I never saw and really, or like promiscuous in a way that wasn't demonized or wasn't like looked down on um, in a way that celebrated sexuality uh, because these were things that I felt that like I really struggled with and I wanted to see. So I think that yes, my audience has changed but my audience has also grown with me because the things that I put out are things that are relevant to me at, at this stage of my life. And it's what, whatever my audience is watching, they've grown with me. Each writing job is yourself proving yourself for the next job. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're in one job and you're kind of almost auditioning for the next one because that showrunner or someone else has a, one of the staff writers, they may become a showrunner. Yeah, I actually think that's one of the hardest things, at least for me, uh, in the writer's room was always feeling like I'm on, like in every meeting I'm on, like, because this is, you know, someone that could potentially hire me for the next thing. And the thing is that unfortunately it's true. Um, unfortunately you are kind of always auditioning, but I think the positive thing about it is that it kind of just is a good way to remind you that this is work because I think that sometimes the looseness of the industry and the fact that like, even when you're in a writer's room where it was very competitive to get in and to be hired, um, it's very like lax, it's very relaxed, or it can be uh, in, in a lot of the, the rooms. Some rooms are not that, that relaxed, but I think there's like a frequent blurring of like, professional lines like we're friends we're a family <laughs> we're you know we're just goofy writers you know what I mean but like at the end of the day this episode costs like millions of dollars <laughs> and you're getting paid a lot of money to like and you're working a lot of hours and the the stress is there the pressure is there from the network the studio uh you, you wanting to make the audience happy you wanting a hit show so there's a lot going on that puts pressure um but I think remembering that uh you're at work and kind of having to be on is a little bit good because it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you um, present and attentive and contributing um, because the difference is that once you get hired, you do have to prove your value. Like it is a job um, and it's not about like your feelings. It's not about, you know, my friend didn't, 
my showrunner was didn't like me today. <laughs> it's about did you contribute today? You know, were you proud of the work that you did today at work? Because uh, you are at work, and um, that is unfortunately or fortunately, you know. So I think for some of us, uh, at least for me as an introvert it's okay because then I get to compartmentalize like when I'm about to be on camera or when I'm about to be um, in a meeting, in a general meeting or in a pitch meeting or whatever I'm at, like I know I need to be at attention. I need to, I know I have to have done my work, at least if I wanna feel like I did a good job, that's what I have to do. Uh, and I think that that's okay because that is our work and that's what we do. And it is the nature of the work that we have to show up and we have to, we have to perform um, to make ourselves proud and to contribute as much as possible to the productions that we're a part of. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you said that. That's kind of reframed some things for me because you're right. Being in the entertainment industry, even if it's you're on set as an extra or whatever, there is a lightness and everything's all fun and nobody wants to be too much of a downer, but it is still work. It's work. And you still have boundaries and there's still professional lines you don't cross and things like that. Absolutely, and I think it's important to remember but just because I think it's a way for us to not necessarily take some of the rejections personally. Uh, if if my idea doesn't get into the episode, if, um, you know, if my writing isn't particularly liked or isn't used or is deleted and, you know, the showrunner rewrites me or something like that, it's like it helps me not take it so personally because if I'm like, oh, that's my friend, that's deleting my work, then it really hurts my feelings. But it's like, that's my boss, or that is my coworker, uh, who is a higher level writer that's rewriting me because they know uh, what the people that they have to answer to are looking for, or they have a certain standard that they have to uphold for the show, or whatever it is. You know, like if some, if, you know, the room can be very democratic. It's like, if something's funny, everybody laughs. If it's not funny, nobody laughs. Um, or maybe, you know, the showrunner thinks it's really funny and nobody else thinks it's funny, but that's how democracy works in a writer's room. <laughs> the showrunner thinks it's funny, it gets in the show. So I just think that it helps depersonalize some things that can feel very personal because it's creative work. It's important to remember that at the end of the day, you are at work and this is about contribution, uh, not about you being validated and like praised all the time.